Hello, Sports fans. Today is March 14, 2016, Monday night. I'm Mr. Fred Online, your host, and with me tonight with our NBA review is uh, two special guests of mine, uh, Wacy and Rod. Yo, yo, what's going on, man? What's up, man? What it do? Hey, man, welcome back, fellas. Uh, it's been a little while, but man, I know you all been taking in that the basketball action, and uh, we got a lot to talk about today. So I'm sure everybody's pumped up for it, and I'm sure you guys are as well. Uh, did you did you, did you all enjoy the basketball over the weekend? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh always. Well, good. I mean, it was you know there was everything from NCAA to NBA and. Uh, high school all star action, so there was a lot going on over the past uh, couple of weeks here, and um, you know it's time for us to get down to it, man. Tonight we're going to cover, um, you know, various topics in that sport. Um, you know, one of the issue, one of the topics will be, uh, you know, LeBron James. You know, where do we have LeBron James at this stage of his career as far as the all time rankings? Um, the NBA playoffs are coming up. So we're going to talk about, you know, maybe some surprise teams and and uh, who's going to get in, who's not. Uh, we're going to talk about some NBA rookies, you know, follow up on them as they progress through their first season. And Ben Simmons, you know, he's been a hot topic of late, uh, the LSU freshman sensational player. And, man, I, I hope everybody's got their brackets together, you know, it's time to it's time to win some money this year with the brackets. So the NCAA time, and yeah, we'll kick it. It's almost hard in the lottery. <laughs> yeah, hey, you can say that again, man. I'm, you know, but we'll jump right into that and talk about this NCAA since the brackets came out last night. Um, I'm definitely hoping my you know my situation is a lot better than it was last year, where I had to tear my bracket up on the first day. Yeah. So, so I'm counting on you guys, man, to, to give me some insight on uh, on the brackets, man, the NCAA tournament. You know, who do you have winning it, your Final Four, uh, any surprise teams? And uh, we can kick, uh, if you want to, uh, Rod, you can kick it out for us. Oh, boy. Uh, this, this year is hard, man, because there's it, no standout teams. <laughs> no. I mean, everybody kind of middle of the pack, man. Um, I really, I, to tell you the truth, man, I really ain't even did did a bracket, man, because that's why I said this one, this one impossible right here. Um, but, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, this one, this one, this, this is the worst one here. Like normally, you can at least pick who's gonna be the final four. I can't even tell you who the final four is, man. To tell you the truth, it's uh, it's, it's that even, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean. So when it's that even, I'm gonna lean on the coaches. So I'm, I'm, you know, because um, I think the coaches make the difference. So you can never go wrong with Coach K, never go wrong with Coach Izzo, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, it's, those are my two coaches right there. <laughs> Just gonna leave it at that. Oh, hey. I, I really, you know, uh, I, 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 I'll say, I, I'll say those, those two teams will get there. Okay, well, I mean the pedigree of Duke and uh, Michigan State, you know, that's hard to that's hard to turn down. Um, they usually find a way to make a run. So, uh, you know, but that that might be your championship, depending on how the brackets fall. Uh, what you got, Wacy? Okay, uh, for me, first off, man, I'm a Tar Heel, North Carolina Tar Heel fan, man. So, so that's 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 gonna be a given right there. Uh, I got North Carolina. Um, in Virginia, then I got uh, Kansas and Texas A&M. Oh, uh, wow. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go North Carolina to win it all for the simple fact, man. <laughs> um, up under Rod Williams, man, during his tenure, he 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 has a thing to where he he normally either wins it or he's Final Four, but after that, he's normally like. Four or five years off before you see him again. Mm-hmm. Uh, he norm- he normally comes with a lot of 
a good mix of upperclassmen mixed with underclassmen, and that's normally when he gets it done. And this year's team really fits that mold with the uh, with Bryce Johnson and Marcus Page uh, seniors, and they got a nice mix of freshmen and sophomores in there um, that kind of play vital roles. And normally when he has a team like this with a good mix of youth and experience, that's normally when he gets it done. So I believe North Carolina is going to win the championship this year. So that's that's me. Wow. Now, who are who are all the num- the number one seeds? You have well, you got, Carolina. you got North Carolina, you got Virginia, you got Oregon, and uh, is it Kansas? Would it be, would it be Kansas, Kansas, maybe? Yeah, yeah Kansas. 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 Yeah, Kansas is the fourth one. Yeah. Okay. Wow, Virginia. So that's showing the strength of the ACC there with Virginia and Carolina. They just played in the in the um, ACC championship game. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that and that was a, and that was a tough battle. Oh yeah. That could have went. Yeah, that that Carolina pulled away, and uh, but but Virginia's been a, been a tough out this year. Oh yeah. So, I, I I'll have to, you know, I'm gonna lean on you guys here. I'm going with uh, UNC. You, you convinced me on Virginia, and I felt real good about Kansas. Now, the one I, the one I want to see as a sleeper team is Oklahoma. I believe Oklahoma with uh, with Buddy Hill, they they can go on a on a run, and they could uh, you know possibly upset a one seed. So I, 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 I just say this, I, I say I, I say this year, man, seeds don't even matter, man. Like. I, I, I could, it, I would not be surprised if every last one of these one seeds went home first round. It's, it's just that easy, easy man. I, don't, I, 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 I would be surprised because North Carolina to go home the first round that would be a big surprise to me. Um, I, 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 I know, I know you feel, I know you love, I know you're a tar, tar Hill to the day you die. I know you love them, <laughs> man. I, yeah. I, 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 they, and they, they are solid team, but they, they not world beaters either. I mean, well, they're not world beaters, but I don't, I don't think it's as even as you're trying to make it as far as the um, the seed and the bracket and the teams that made it. Uh, I definitely think it's it's a it's a toss up, but it's it's not that that even as far as um, you know the strength of you know of the brackets. I don't I don't think it's that even. I think you have those teams. I think this year, more so than any other years that you could possibly have all four number one seeds in the final four when normally that don't happen. So mm. I, I can kind of see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's how unpredictable this, this, this tournament will be. Uh, I mean, look at all the top seeds this season. Man. Every time there was a number one seed, they end up losing. So uh, oh, yeah. it – it, that just show you right there. It can go any kind of direction, and uh, oh, yeah. they have some intriguing, some intriguing second round matchups too. Um, you know, you could tell that the uh, the uh, committee has a sense of humor because uh, I mean they're looking at like they, if it falls the way it's supposed to, you have like a Texas versus Texas A and M. You have a um, a Kentucky versus Indiana. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sure they sat back and thought about that, but. Uh, that's going to be interesting. So we'll, we'll see how it all shake out. But speaking of college basketball and, uh, you know, top top flight teams, how about a top flight player in Ben Simmons out of Louisiana State University? Uh, he's He's been on a – he's been a hot topic um, of the last – well, actually this entire season, but especially um, – with the uh, the way this team was eliminated from the SEC playoffs or uh, SEC tournament, how they just were demolished by Texas A&M, who by the way might be a surprise team as well in the in the tournament. Um, Wasted you mentioned them earlier, but Simmons, how about you guys give me your take on Ben Simmons? Um, how do you feel about his his one and done season and the outlook? Um, of his NBA season, you know, where do you feel like he's going to end up being drafted, and was there any effects from LSU not making the postseason? Um, I, I could speak on that. I mean, uh, being a Laker fan and, and really hoping that we, you know, can get that number one pick and have an opportunity to select him. Uh, I think the kid is very talented, uh, and uh, 
you know, and, and he can he can he can go on to be a franchise changer, or he could, you know, as, as me and Wade said discussed earlier, that he could he could he could turn out to be Michael Beasley. You know, I, I think he don't fall any lower than Michael Beasley in terms of, but he's um, he has a, a lot of talent. Um, the problem that I see with him is that he's not an assertive leader. Um, and he doesn't have a three point shot. He doesn't. He, he's not. A, he's not an excellent shooter. Um, the shooting part, it really depends on his work ethic. I really don't know the kid's work ethic. I don't know. Um, you know, is, is is he a gym rat? Does he love being in the gym? If he loves being in the gym, the shot will come, and um, everything will be fine. Uh, but um, the leadership aspect, I don't think he will develop that because leadership is sort of something like if you ain't got it by now, you won't get it. Um, which is fine because he can just be the guy that you know goes out and delivers, and that's and that's that's great. Um, but based on talent wise, I still see him going no less than top three because um, he 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 is an elite talent. Uh, unfortunately, uh, LSU didn't really give him a a one two punch. They didn't really you know put a put a, a squad around him, but. Um, but he can play. He he's definitely the real deal. He definitely has all the tools to be an elite player. Okay, so you definitely have him potentially as an elite player. Uh, is it safe to say an all star perennial all star type talent. of player? Okay, elite talent. Talent. Okay, <laughs> elite talent. Um, the player aspect is all about the mental and the heart. That's the part there I have yet to see. Um, and so, and, and that's, and that's something that's really tough to gauge one year of college basketball. You really, you, you really don't know the, the mental aspects and, and all that stuff there. So, I mean, um, that's, that's really what I'm, what I'm looking to see, you know, um, as he translates over to the NBA, really his work ethic and his, his mental, um, um, fortitude and, and, and him being able to, um, really adapt to the, to, to the NBA game and really put in the work because he has the tools to be a great player, but it's about the work. Is he willing to put in the work? Okay. What are your thoughts, Lacey? I think that um, by them not making the uh, tournament and, you know, him coming out and showing that, you know, he's – you know, he's not invincible on the college level. I think that it was a blessing, blessing in disguise for him because um, now what that does, uh, it's going to lower expectations on him. Um, I think that he will be a good pro, uh, hit and miss, all-star, you know, uh, give or take the years. You know, he you know, he may be one of those guys that make the all-star every, you know, a year here and miss it there and then come back and make it. Uh, he definitely has the tools. uh become an all-star i'm i'm gonna pause on the superstar level type of thing because i i got this thing man and 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 i may be wrong for it. it's a little bias on my on my behalf i know it but i just got this thing about left-handers being franchise players and all-time greats <laughs> so i mean you, you definitely have guys that were really good players and some of them were you know, borderline superstars or whatever, you know, like your David Robinson, uh, Willis Reed, those type of guys were pretty good. But if you just look at your all-time greats and you're just, you know, you're just franchise-changing guys, it's it's almost across the board, right-hand, right-handed players. So, you know, I just got a theory with, with left-handed guys. But, but as far as Ben Simmons goes, I think that he would definitely be a solid pro, and I'm kind of glad that this happened to him. Because now some of the hype, as you know, you know people people are pausing a little bit, and that may end up being a blessing in disguise for him because it won't be as much pressure on him to, you know, to, you know to just come right in and just show that he's this, you know, all this comparing to LeBron early on and stuff like that. You know, I think people people now lowering those expectations once they've seen him, you know, kind of look look a little bad, you know, at toward the end of the season. So, you know, that, that's that's my theory on Ben Simmons right there. Yeah. Um, All right. I well, gotta, I, I gotta address, I gotta address this left handed thing real quick. Now, um, I just want to give you a little bit of mathematical, little math behind that. You know, mm-hmm. 
as we know, left hand, that's not a dominant gene, okay? We also know that it's dang near impossible to get in the NBA. So you're going to have a very, very small pool already, you know, of left-handed players even in the NBA. So to just say that, okay, because you're left-handed, you're not going to be great, I think that's a little bit unfair. And I think you really shorten that list, too, because, I mean, you know, might not be, you know, what you call all-time great top ten, but I, I think David Robinson is an all-time great. I think, you know, Ginobili, he's left-handed. He's a great player. Chris Mullen, that's a left-handed great player. I mean, um, Tiny Archibald was left-handed. So, you, I mean, you got you had guys that were great players that were left-handed. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, you know, um, really comes down to, I think, more so mathematics. you just not going – it's not a lot of left-handed people, you know, on the planet to begin with especially good enough to even get to the NBA. That may be true, but I tell you what, if you go do your top 20 all-time list, you may have one or two left-handers in there, man. And uh, and it may have something to do with mathematics. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I'm just saying my observation, you know, you, you have great left-handed players, but I just have never seen one to be – you know, just a franchise changing. You know, Dave Robinson was great, and uh, a couple of other, those other guys were solid. But, well, I, as, as a matter of fact, I can tell you why I, I just looked it up. You know, just, you know, uh, <laughs> I, definitely a top five player. The great Bill Russell was left-handed. I think I think that's a pretty big <laughs> – I think that's a pretty big name, uh, you know, especially when you start getting the, you know, I mean uh, – uh, you start talking about all time great, so I mean, I, 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 I hear what you're saying about the left handed players, and you know, and this, that, and other. But I don't think it's necessarily has anything to do with that left hand. I just think it's more so just the odds. When you get into the odds, you know, it's it's going to be very small. It's a, it's a small odd that you're going to be able to get in there. Um, okay. and in the in the I NBA think, with left handed players. I, okay, I I got you, I got you, but uh, like I say. <laughs> Bill Russell, he was a great player, all of that, but he was known for defense. You know what I'm saying? And uh, but I'm just saying, me, me personally, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't see many. That's just me now. I don't see many left-handed guys that's just gonna change, you know, be the face of a franchise, just change the organization, and be Kobe Bryant and the Michael Jordans and the, the, the LeBrons, the Wade. I don't see many left-handed guys gonna do that, uh, especially not on the offensive end. So that's just me, man. That's just me. That's just my theory. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, Simmons, man. I mean, if you look at, you know, his his overall statistical season, um, especially in the college game, where it's a more of a, uh, I guess, lack of a better word, a more structured type of game, shorter game. Um, you know, for him to average 19 points, uh, close to 10, 11 rebounds, and five assists a game. I mean, those are eye popping numbers. Um, you know, I'm just thinking that, you know, there are some things like you guys mentioned, like his leadership ability and and uh and and, and some you know, maybe some some things like that. But as far as the talent, I think we all can agree he's definitely gonna be a, a top a top three pick at at worst. You know, but I personally think that he's gonna go number one. Um just what you know, when you pick him up and then drop him into an NBA type of game where it's more open and I think it's going to be more suited for what he can do. Um, and then he also will have uh, players around him, young, you know, veterans especially, but he'll have better players around him and I think his game will, will translate to becoming a um, a very good NBA player. I would definitely, I definitely believe he's going to be an all-star probably no later than year three. He'll be an all-star and, um, and with the right mix, especially if he joins the Lakers, you know, I could see him becoming a perennial all star. I just think that the all around game, it his style of play would fit basically any NBA team. Um and and, and like most people think, you know, he's gonna either be a, a stud or he's gonna be um, you know, just a very, very good player. So uh, we'll definitely see how that turns out. But um uh, Simmons is definitely going to have a very nice payday in a couple of months. Oh yeah. Um, and you know Simmons will be—he'll have to go through um, a lot of things that 
the current NBA rookies are um, have been had to go through so far this season. Um, you know the ups and downs of uh, you know becoming a pro. And um, our next topic will cover the current NBA rookies. And we have guys like uh, what Justin Winslow, Devin Booker, uh, Stanley Johnson, and then we have the guys that you know we really keyed in on this year as, as far as Okafor and Towns and uh, D'Angelo Russell and uh, Porzingis in New York. So, so fellas, tell me um, the rookies this season. Uh, who do you have um, leading the way as your rookie of the year? And um, just give me your overall thoughts on the rookies. Well, for okay. me, um, as we mentioned earlier on the earlier show, Matt, uh, it's still Carl Anthony Towns for me leading the way, and uh, I think I think the way he's been he's been playing since then has pretty much shored up him winning the rookie of the year. You know, in my opinion, um, he's he's definitely you know out front um, now. D'Angelo Russell, for me, he is he is coming into what I seen at Ohio State. Um, I knew that you know I, I knew that he would be a, a, a solid pro. I knew that the number two overall pick would put a little added pressure on him, but uh, he's slowly, slowly turning that curve, and uh, he's becoming what I thought he can be. Uh, if he continues to play like that, um, I don't think the Lakers will 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 um, catch flack for not picking Oka for it. If 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 he keeps it up, which I believe he will, um, so you know a lot of people were down on him. A lot of Laker fans were down on him. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, a lot of them said he was uh, <laughs> one of the worst picks, number two overall picks. He was going to be a bust, and all this. I say. Hey, Pump your brakes, man. I've seen good things from the kid. And a lot of times, point guards and people that play on the wing, they don't translate as quickly as big men do into the NBA, you know, just from my observations again. But I'm going to just end it right there. Anthony, Carl Anthony Towns is leading the way. He's going to probably win every the year. D'Angelo Russell is going to make a lot of people out of, out of a liar. So go ahead. All right. Wait. I will admit, <laughs> Buddy playing better. Buddy playing better. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no doubt about it. Um, I still haven't backed off my stance that uh, uh, Jaleel Okafor uh, is a better choice based on, on what we're trying to go and, and need and all that stuff there. And I just think overall he's a better player. Um, but D'Angelo Russell is definitely uh, playing better. Uh, and he could potentially make me out a lie, you know, as far as uh, uh, him being better than Okafor. He, he had that. He had that potential. He's already made me out a lie in terms of me, you know, just saying he's just he's just a dud, a bust. Um, and I um, and I, I want to take my hat off to Kobe for that um, because early on in the season, what I really didn't like about Russell was his attitude. It was very nonchalant about everything, and I was reading reports about him not coming to practice early and not staying late and first one out the door and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's not going to help you stay in the NBA. But um, I read uh, probably around um, a little bit after Christmas, um, 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 Kobe had a had a heart-to-heart with all the young guys and just told them that, you you know, you got to really want this. You know, and um, and, and from then on, it's, it's been a shift. Um, he, he, you can look at him and tell he's got in the weight room. You can look at him and tell that he's been – Putting in the extra work and then he's, he's getting better. He's looking, he's looking more and more like a like a like an NBA player. So, um, so that's 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 good. And as a Lakers fan, I'm, I'm happy to see it. And, you know, I don't mind being wrong even it come down to my Lakers if it's if it's a good thing. So, um, so I, I hope he he continues to push on. Um, another guy though, um, switching gears from from D'Angelo Russell that I, I was coming on strong. I really. Um, like this guy, and I think he's going to be a, a solid wing player to go um, for the for for a while. Is uh, Devin Booker? I'm I re- I'm really liking what I'm seeing from him lately. Um, you know, uh, Phoenix they're struggling, but uh, but he's a bright spot. Um, so um, he's a guy that I'm I'm, I'm seeing that I'm, I think that he's moving up that ladder. He's not getting a lot of press, 
because uh, he's in Phoenix and, and they don't get a lot of TV games and, you know, there's no fanfare around them, but he's quietly climbing up that, that, that rookie um, board. So um, what you got, Mr. Poe Owen? Let me, let me, well, let me, fellas, so let me, oh, wait, um, let me, I'll let you get in there, Wacy, and then I'll follow up. Yeah, I'm just going to throw a little quick thing in there, man, because I like this. Sometimes I just like this kind of running the ground a little bit. But anyway, check this out, though, about <laughs> about uh, one, another thing, too, about D'Angelo Ross and the Okafor thing. Uh, he's not sitting out because of a knee injury, and he's not in the clubs fighting everybody every other weekend. But go ahead, though. <laughs> yeah, but he out with the Kardashians. But go ahead, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. the hang, 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 hang on the Kardashians. They ain't never been good for the NBA player. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, like like many have said, um, you know, early in the draft, um, you know, there was some concern about the Lakers taking Russell so early, but including myself. But then I got to thinking about it, and it was like, well, they brought in Okafor, worked him out. I mean, worked him out, gave him a serious workout, gave him a good look, and they also did the same with Russell. And it, it was pretty obvious that everyone had Towns as the number one pick and and obviously the number one big man and when they when when the lakers took russell it just made me think about you know what it's either two factors it is either they're trying to build a backcourt to go along with jordan clarkson to match up with who a lot of people project will be the team that you have to dethrone uh over the next five to six years which is golden state um either they're trying to build a backcourt a young backcourt to match up with golden state or they really have some concerns about Okafor as far as long term. I mean, Okafor can everyone knew that Okafor can walk into the walk come into the NBA and he'll put up a double double, I mean, in his sleep. He has that skill set, he has that size. However, um I did hear that there was some concern about his health long term, whether it's his weight, whether it's uh stamina, things like that. But, you know, I think both teams got a good all the teams got a good selection, man. You know, Okafor going to Philly, Russell in L.A., Towns in Minnesota. I mean, I think you can't go wrong with that. Devin Booker couldn't go. That was a nice pick too. And um, as far as the other rookies, um, Prozingis, the Knicks. I think they hit a home run with Prozingis. Um, right now, he's able to be. I think he's coming back down to earth, though. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think. The, well, I think. I think he's coming back down to earth a little bit, and and, and I think I think the the world realizing that hey, he gonna he gonna have to get in the weight room, and he gonna have to, yeah. you know, just, you and, know. And, and 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 over time though, but I mean he's showing you flashes of what he can do, and he doesn't have to be the number one right now. You know what I mean? Carmelo's there, right, so right. he he has time here to kind of get get acclimated to the league, and 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 build on that strength. But he's showing that he can shoot from three. With his size, he has some tenacity about him. I mean, you know, with the putbacks and a little flair. So it seems like he fits right in there with New York. And this is a good period of time right here where he can kind of ease his way in. And as, as Carmelo starts easing his way out, they'll have their, their next superstar. So yes, I believe Pazingas is a project. So yes, he will come down to earth, but I think we've seen enough of him to say, Oh, you know what? And some of these other veterans leave out, move out, and these younger guys become more of the face of the league. You know, he'll be able to compete with his peers. Um, Stanley Johnson, that was one that uh, I think he's going to come around, but he just hasn't quite, you know, made it over that hump. Um, I think he's trying to fit in to what Detroit has there and uh, just trying to actually find his game as well. But one thing I do notice about him, he is a good defender. And, um, that I'll always oh, yeah. give him he, he's, give I, him time. I'm real high on that guy. There, he's he's a really yeah. He, yeah I, I really like him. Um, and and, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm also give a shout out to a guy. He's 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 technically not a rookie, but he might as well he might as well be his rookie season. I mean, he only played all of seven minutes of, of NBA action last year. Julius Randle. Yeah. I know. I know. I, yeah, I, that's I know another way. So he's not not real big on this guy here. But uh, I just want to point out that he's leading all all rookies and sophomores in rebounding. Um, he's been putting up double doubles pretty consistently, um, and uh, he's 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 definitely. Um, I'm starting to see him hit more and more long range shots. So 
as that continues to develop, um, keep an eye on him. Yeah, Randall's really, really been playing some solid ball. He's a tough guy, too. And that's one thing you need. You need some tough guys, you know, in professional basketball. You need that tough, that toughness on your team. Um, and speaking of tough guys, everybody can't win the championship. You know, we have players in the history of this game, Carl Malone, Stockton, you know, just to name two. And they was on the same team. And they don't have a world championship. And in order to win that championship, you have to make the playoffs. So that transitions, transition us into the NBA playoffs. Uh, I want to get you guys predictions, uh, as far as the East and West. I think it's pretty safe to say that the favorites, Golden State and, um, Cleveland to meet in the finals. However, I like for you guys, and we can start with the, with the West and then work our way to the East. But give me a team that you feel could could dethrone, go to state in the West, and then when we transition to the East, we'll do the same thing to see who who we feel will dethrone Cleveland uh, or at least have the best chance to do that. Let me me, me jump in on that one, man. Let me jump in on that. All right. Okay. Out West, um, and, and I kind of feel a little funny saying this, you know, about, you know, kind of like being an underdog team. But out west, San Antonio, <laughs> I think, are the only team that can beat Golden State in a series. In a series. Um, and I kind of hate mentioning them with, 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 with you know, kind of like how the topic is, but I'm going with San Antonio because these guys are, I think they're like 56, 57, and 10 or something like that, and nobody's <laughs> talking about yeah. it. Nobody is talking about it. I'm like, this is 32, 33 and 0 at home. I'm like, man, wow. You know what I mean? Um, I know what mm-hmm. Golden State is doing is absolutely unbelievable, but it's just something about Popovich and the way that they go about business is just, is just telling me we just want them in a series. I mean, yeah, I mean, I know he's saying all of the stuff is about – there's no way to stop them, and all of this and that. Popovich with the gangsmanship, but I'm telling you, I know in that locker room, they are secretly praying to get Golden State in the series. And if San Antonio get Golden State in a series, I'm gonna either be a rich man, or I'm gonna be a broke man because I'm <laughs> I'm taking all bets and I'm taking San Antonio to beat them. I don't know how many games it'll take, but I'm taking San Antonio to dethrone Golden State if they meet in the. Well, well, what's your what's your what's your major key uh, to you know as far as you feeling that way? What is the major key to the Spurs that make you feel like they can be thrown the Warriors? Okay, um, well, what makes me feel like the Spurs will dethrone the, the Warriors is just their their low post presence and uh, it's it, it just they stick to the script. They got a system, and 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 even and you see it when Golden State blew them out. They did not try to play Golden State's game. They got beat playing San Antonio Spurs style of play is what I'm saying. And I just feel like in a series, I feel like if they stick to their style, which they normally do 90%, 95% of the time, they stick to their script. They do that, I feel like Popovich is a good enough coach and they got, the person, they got good enough personnel to where they will make adjustments. And I personally just feel like they will beat um, Golden State because of that. Um, with Aldrich and then with Duncan and David West. I mean, I, I believe that that's going to be the difference. They're going to play San Antonio basketball. They're going to stick to the script. And I believe that I, that's, just, that's, that's my major key right there. I think they're going to play their ball. And I think their um, low post presence is going to what, what, uh, ultimately beat Golden State. Um, so that's why. And as far as um, our East go, let me just say this, man. Let me just say this, and uh, and I'm just gonna be real about it. And me and Rod talked about it earlier. If Chris Bosh comes back, and he's Chris Bosh, okay, I'm shaking, I'm shaking in my boots right now. Cause I'm telling, wow. you, I I don't believe, I believe that team right there. If they get Cleveland in a series, man, with with the addition of Joe Johnson, and and Chris Bosh back healthy, and being Chris Bosh. Man, 
I I don't know if they I don't know if they beat Cleveland, but I tell you what, that series right there is going to have to be a lot of growing up in Cleveland. And if they don't grow up, they will get beat. And LeBron will have to be the one who takes charge and be that leader and and, and get those guys mentally prepared. Because I'm telling you, that Miami team with with the veterans with Wade and Haslam and even just Pat Riley behind the scenes, you know he's going to be throwing in his little, you know, his little um, tidbits or whatever. But that team scares me if Box comes back healthy. And Whiteside, they just have the formula, man. If they're healthy, they got the formula to not just beat Cleveland. They got that formula to be a dark horse uh, championship team, man. They they can come out of nowhere and win it if they're healthy. Okay. That's, that's, that's what I got in the East, man. All right, what you got, Rod? Okay. Um, I mean, it's it's dang near identical to what Wade said. I mean, which I, I I'm I'm still picking the Spurs to win it all anyway. Um, with uh Tim Duncan riding out into the sunset. Uh, but uh, but yeah, man. When it comes down to it, uh, obviously the Spurs and um and. You know, I give you a little bit, you know, different reason why I think that they will beat Golden State is because of uh, Kawhi Leonard. Um, Ka- Kawhi Leonard can – he can – I think what you saw earlier this season, what, what, what he did was uh, – what Popovich did, he put Kawhi Leonard on Stephen Curry. Um, now, of course, you know, Stephen Curry being who he is and being, you know, in my opinion right now the best player in the league um, – you know, Kawhi Leonard, even Kawhi Leonard couldn't even stop him, you know. Um, but I think Kawhi Leonard can stop and shut down Draymond Green. And I think if you shut down Draymond Green, you shut down everybody else. And, 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 and you got to just, hey, you know, tell tell your second best defender to go out there and do your best against Steph Curry and pray for the best. But I think, you know, um, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard would definitely uh, – uh, <laughs> um, Shut down Draymond Green, and like I say, in terms, shut down the the the, the rest of the offense because Draymond Green makes sure everybody else gets off, um, and so um, that's why I'm I'm still sticking with the Spurs um, to actually win it all. Um, but you know, that's not to say that you know because Golden State they're a phenomenal team. You know, they can beat the Spurs, but I, I'm I'm still sticking with I'm still sticking with the Spurs. Um, but out, out, out east, yeah, pretty much, you know, same thing. Uh, I think Miami is a problem, but I'm going to add another team, too, if they can slide in. If they, if Chicago slides into that AC um, and Cleveland don't have their head on straight, if Chicago slides, slides into that AC and they are healthy, meaning wow. Butler's back, Derrick Rose back, Paul Gasol back, if, if those three guys are healthy, Cleveland will have the fight of a lifetime their first round. That that first round right there, any Cleveland fan should be nervous if they see the Bulls. First well, I'm not, round. I'm not healthy. nervous of the Bulls. I'm not nervous of the Bulls. I'm not worried about them, period. And they can be healthy. Okay. That okay. Miami team, that Miami team, if healthy, that's the only team I'm worried about. And they scare me for real. Not no Chicago. Hmm. I mean, Chicago is what they're going to be every year. They're going to always play Cleveland hard or any teams LeBron's on. As long as they got some of that same personnel that that was there during the Thibodeau era, they're going to play LeBron hard just because of that rivalry. They're not going to beat LeBron. I'm telling you. They're not going to beat Cleveland. I'm not I'm not worried about Chicago. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not worried about that. That, I, I, that was an interesting um, point that uh, Rob brought up, though, about the Bulls, because uh, you know we also had on our on our script here to, to discuss um, possible teams that may or may not get in the playoffs, and um, let's just say um, Chicago does squeak in there at that AC. I mean, this was the, the they played in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, correct? Right. Yeah. And, I, I and, mean. And, and and so that's a I mean for the first round for in the Eastern Conference for a potential. Eastern Conference Finals matchup to be in the first round. You wouldn't be concerned about that, Wacy? Well, I mean, oh, he's very I, disrespectful saying, about it. That's the, that's the thing about it. He, he's, he's very disrespectful. No, uh, no, it, it's not that I'm disrespectful. It's just that 
<laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen it before. Uh, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, Chicago Bulls. No matter when, look, Cleveland, LeBron, they played Chicago in the first round before. Well, he was in Miami, but anyway, again, yeah, he yeah. I, I, look, look, look. This ain't, this ain't. What I'm trying to, what I'm trying to tell you, and what I'm trying to get you to understand is, then just put, just put this in perspective. Before the injuries, before the injuries, Chicago was a number two seed, really battling out for number one. That's what I'm trying to get oh. you to understand. Like they, 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 this ain't don't 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 give me don't give me Nate Robinson Bulls. Talking about we played them first round. Like this ain't not your. I'm talking about I'm talking about a team where everywhere they, you got four, five, six guys that are six ten strong. This is what, it, it, this is, they actually got this, shooting this year. They, they got they got multiple scoring options when they healthy. When healthy, Chicago's a formidable team. I, I've never said they wasn't formidable. I'm telling you, is okay. Chicago is who they are. They are who they are. Okay. They they're not gonna get over a hump. They're gonna play Cleveland hard. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any team that LeBron James plays on, that Noah and, and Gibson and and those guys that, that that was there up under the Thibodeau regime, they don't like LeBron, so they're gonna play him hard regardless, whether it's the first round, second round, or whatever round. But I don't think they have enough, even if they're healthy. They were pretty much fairly healthy last year. And 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 they, I mean, they played them hard. But they, I'm what I'm saying to you is, I know they're going to play and what, hard. And what, and what I'm telling you is this, and I told you this last year. If Pogasol had a man up and came out there, one of them games, it's going seven. Anything has to seven. Well, Pogasol lost that series. He told me, "Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not feeling it, this game." I'm like, "Well, it's the playoffs. What do you mean you're not feeling it?" So I mean. Like 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 the old people say, man. I was killing y'all. Like like the old people say, Mr. Four One One. If if was a, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> if if I hear I'm you. telling you though, I'm telling you like this, and I'm gonna be done with it. Chicago, the Chicago Bulls, 100 percent healthy. Uh, probably push Cleveland to seven. They won't win it. You can say what you want to say about anything happening seven. May true, true or not, but team that scared me out there. I'm gonna tell you who else more more scary to me outside of Miami than Chicago is is Toronto. Um, I, I would I would rather play Chicago than than Toronto if I were Cleveland. Um, I mean I mean I would rather play Chicago versus Toronto because that Toronto team just seems like they match up well. They just give Cleveland a lot of problems, man. You know when they play them out east. So, so that's just me, man. I'm, I'm not sold on Chicago. You know I think they. Want to bust that team up anyway, but that's it. Go ahead. Well, I have to agree with you guys as far as out west. Um, you know, even though my 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 preseason prediction is the L.A. Clippers coming out the west, um, I, I would have to go with, you know, for the sake of this show, the Spurs have the uh, best option, the best chance of dethroning the Warriors, uh, knocking the Warriors off before the finals. Um, they they just have. They have the formula. It's just a matter of seeing if they if they can execute it. And and also, um, I believe they're going to probably have the most attention to detail on defense. And that's what you have to have when you're playing a team like Golden State. You have to, you know, just as much as, um, you know, the attention is drawn to teams offensively and how you have to play together offensively, you have to do the same thing on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, if, if they can do that defensively, they have the rebounding, and uh, they have perimeter defense with uh, Kawhi. A little concerned about Tony Parker um, on the defensive side, but overall the Spurs have a good scheme um, as far as playing team defense. So if they can just, you know, you force Golden State, keep them outside of that painted area, and, hey, it's going to be the make or miss uh, type of series. So if Golden State's making them, if they're making all of them, uh, it's good night. But if they're not making, you know, uh, an absurd amount of jump shots. I think the Spurs can can walk them down. Um, and as far as the East go, Toronto is my team that I feel like, you know, look, they can come out. They can come out the East this year. They're not a team to joke around with, and uh, you know, just kind of treat them like the, uh, you know, like the old, you know, stepchild or something. You know, you can't. You know, Toronto is coming to play. They. Um, 44 and 20 right now. That's an impressive record. They have some impressive games against the uh, uh, against the West and the East. So 
you know, this team has athleticism. They have experience, which is key. They have been in the playoffs the last couple of seasons and, and it went home prematurely. Um, but those are lessons that you have to, you know, take and uh, those confidence that you have to take in order to move to the next level. So if Cleveland's not careful there, um, Toronto can knock them out. Um, I like Miami's roster, but I'm just a little concerned about the uh, the overall health of the team. You know, right, what right. kind of which which weight are you going to get, or which boss are you going to get? You know, I'm not really just concerned with Dragic and and uh, now White Side's a problem, but you know, has he ever carried a franchise yet? So I think it's Toronto uh, with the overall scheme that they have. But that you know, that's just my thoughts and. Uh, I think that uh that's, that's you know, I think we've covered covered the playoffs pretty good here. Um, giving the listeners something to think about. Um again, keep an eye on the Bulls, keep an eye on Toronto. Um obviously don't overlook the Spurs. Fifty six and ten is an impressive is an impressive record. Um any other year you'd be like, Wow. I mean, that's all the talk would be. So yeah. you know, we can't sneeze at a team that with only ten losses and then you know, we're already into halfway through March. So uh, NBA fans, get ready for the playoffs. Now, those NBA fans that are not going to see the playoffs, uh, see their team in the playoffs. Um, out of those teams, fellas, uh, give me a team that you feel like, hey, they didn't quite make it into the playoffs this year or, or they're not going to get in, but the arrow is definitely pointing up for that franchise. Uh, I jump in on this, and I, I would say, for me, um, it's it's uh, it, I, I I'll give you two players. I give you two teams, um, in um each conference, um, that are, are uh, they they're gonna miss the playoffs, but they're they're uh, headed in the right direction. Um, still, I still say um, I'm gonna start with the East. I still say Milwaukee, um, is 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 headed in the right direction. Um, it was devastating that they lost the Greek Freak for that stretch because I think if they had him healthy the full season, they would actually be in the playoffs. But okay. um, I think, you know, it's a blessing in the sky for them because by them missing the playoffs, they're going to end up with a, with a pretty good draft pick again. And so they're going to be even better. And uh, hopefully they'll be able to um, stay, stay healthy, full strength um, all the next year and be able to get in there. Um, and and I'm, I can't really count them out all together now because they've been on a win streak and they only – Five games out with twenty games to go, um, so that's not that's not impossible for them to still make the playoffs. Um, but uh, that that's the that's the team out out east that I, I think um, is uh, headed in the, in the right direction. Um, honestly, you know what? Uh, uh, the Pistons they're going to make the playoffs. I still say I still say the Pistons are, are headed in, in, in the right direction as well. Um, I think uh, Stan Van Gun is doing a, a, a good job of of uh, restructuring that team, and really he's putting together um, the Orlando Magic of old. If you really, really pay attention to what he's doing with Drummond, Drummond is is, 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 is the, the White Howard, but he's slowly putting that shooting core around him. Don't be surprised if he goes really hard after Ryan Anderson um, to to be that that guy um, to to stretch that floor and really play that. Or, um, Orlando Magic style basketball where they, um, he took them to the finals. Um, that's a guy I think he's going to really go hard out there um, in the in the summer. Um, out west, um, I think that um, the the teams that are are, are um, heading in the right direction they're at the bottom now, but uh, they they are they are really coming. Um, and I, um, I think, uh, obviously Minnesota, I love what they're doing. Um, as we alluded to, Kyle's a stud. Um, he's, he's, he's going to definitely be able to, to, uh, solidify that franchise before long. Um, Wiggins, I mean, all, um, Levine, all those guys, very talented. And the fact, like I say, they're missing the playoffs again. They're going to get another good player. Um, so that team, they're definitely on the, um, uptick and, um, my, even though they the, the the worst team in the West, the Lakers, I think that they are on the uptick. Uh, they have a good young core. Um, um, as we talked about, uh, D'Angelo Russell coming around. Um, Clarkson was always there. D'Angelo um, um, and uh, Ju- Julius Randle's playing well, and um, I think um, they're they're probably going to end up with a top three pick, uh, whether it be uh, uh, Ben Simmons or or, or, um, or Ingram. 
um, from Duke. I, I would I would be happy to get either one of those players as a, as a Laker fan. And uh, and as me and Wasey have discussed, and he, he called this my theory. I, I I really believe that uh, everybody's saying Durant. I think we're gonna make a real strong push for Whiteside and steal him from Miami. Um, and um, if we if we do that, that that is one hell of a <laughs> starting five young core. So. Um, so I, I think I think they're in position with with cap space and, and with uh, the draft picks to to really um, um, go upward in the future. Okay. And what about you, Racy? Uh, for me, it's Minnesota. Uh, that would be the team uh, that sticks out more so than anybody as far as the future being bright. Um, I think they have a lot of pieces, and I think that uh, what they need to do is some of them are could, could turn out to be assets that they can use um, to maybe trade away. Now, Wiggins and Towns, you know, you don't touch those guys. But this Levine guy, I think that you can kind of, while his name is kind of hot, um, I think you can use him and, you know, like Rubio and, couple of more of the other guys. You can kind of dangle the names out there to try to, you know, gauge interest and maybe, you know, still a solid veteran role type player and start, you know, start trying to bring some of that, that, that those kind of players in um, because I think definitely with Towns and, and, and Wiggins, you go ahead and build around. Um, so the future looks bright, very bright, if Minnesota front office plays it right. Um, they're in position to really, really – Really make some moves and be a, a real force if they can, they can make you know a couple of moves. Um, another team that I still say the future is bright for, even though they took a step back uh, this year, is uh, New Orleans. Um, you know, I think that I, I, I read something the other day where they're pretty much saying they're not going to resign Gordon. Um, I think during his off season. Um, they got to focus on trying trying to bring in some guys uh, who I don't know. Uh, as long as you got Anthony Davis there, pretty much fairly healthy, um, I think the future is bright. Uh, but they need to make some moves, some key moves um, this summer. And um, those two, you know, more so Minnesota, but the Pelicans step out and and um, and Minnesota. So that, that those are my teams. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. We instead instead of me overlapping with some of the same you know same teams because you know you guys are all over it man you 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 nailed some of the ones that I was that I that I had on my sheet you know I had the Lakers New Orleans I had those guys down there um, but just to throw a twist in there you know let's just go back to the team we mentioned earlier that's possible that's a possible one eight matchup with the with the um, Cavaliers, and that's the Bulls. I mean, injuries is what's got them where they, you know, has them where they are now. So, I mean, not making the playoffs, um, possibly, you know, somehow the ball falls the right way. Can you imagine if they can land, you know, a top eight, top nine type player uh, in the lottery? I mean, Chicago, I mean, if you're a Chicago fan, you have to say, hey, you know what? You know, we may end up with with a young piece, and especially with the the, the situation with uh, Derrick Rose, how he's not healthy, and he will probably not be the Derrick Rose that we all you know have grown to love. Um, I mean, they could probably get him get a get a new, get a young player in there, um, maybe a Buddy Hill type player. You know, depending on how he falls in the draft. So, um, I would say keep an eye on that. See if Chicago makes that playoff line. If they fall above it or below it. And uh, Chicago could could possibly uh, use the draft uh, very, you know, to their to their favor uh, this year. Um, actually, kind of like what they did with Derrick Rose. I mean, that's how they got Rose. The uh, they wasn't supposed to land the top pick that year, but you know, the lottery fell their way, and um, they got Derrick Rose, and their franchise changed. Um, so keep an eye on that situation as well. Um, Utah Jazz. Um, I felt like they were going to make the playoffs this year. They are not going to make it, you know, based on how far they are away from uh well, they're only a game or two out uh, from Dallas, so it is a chance, but 
if Utah doesn't make the playoffs, that's another team. Um, they have a lot of young talent. They have some bigs. They have a uh, solid, you know, solid uh, wing play. They're well coached too. Um, um, so Utah is a team I would say, you know, just just keep an eye on them as well um, for their future. Um, now, the future is now for LeBron James. Um, he has two championships, but as we all know, he's trying to win one for the land, as he says. Uh, the big topic on LeBron, and this is the question of the night. ESPN basically has LeBron, what, top five all time in their, um, you know, as far as their all time rankings go. But ESPN is not the end all be all. I want to hear from Wacy and Rod on LeBron James and his current, you know, outlook as far as or you guys current outlook as far as LeBron and where does he stand in your all time rankings? Well, I'm 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 gonna let, I'm 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 gonna go first because I'm sure Rod is gonna close this one out. Uh <laughs> Really, really good. You know, I, I just, I just got that feeling. <laughs> so let me just, let me just jump in there, man. I'm gonna just say this, man. You know, LeBron is definitely my guy. Uh, but at the same time, you know, and me and Roy talk about it sometimes, from time to time. I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm just, I'm very opinionated, but I'm a realist as far as, in my opinion, when it comes to observation. I don't have LeBron uh, top five. Um, I have him more. Um, more so around eight, nine, somewhere in there right now. Uh, if he wins that championship you was talking about, he definitely teeters up to me towards five, six. Um, but right now, to rank him, I think ESPN had him three or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. But to rank him, yeah. yeah, but but to rank him, even top five, I think is uh, I think is uh, it's not accurate. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, and uh, I, I I just pretty much I I had a list I don't know it right off the top but I know I know he was round nine ish I think where I had him at. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So that that that's why I have LeBron, and that's that's just pretty much it. He's not he's he he still has work to do for me to put him anywhere top five. And uh, and, and, and just and, and just to give you a little little, I'll just give you this little tidbit. I just wrote down five names, and uh, I have Kareem, MJ, mm-hmm. for those who don't know, Michael Jordan, um, Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, Magic Johnson. It, I mean, just right there, it's hard for me to say that LeBron James or any other player besides those five um, would be in that top five as of right now. Now, that's just my opinion, but... You know, you guys can take it from there. Yeah, and, and one more thing before before Roy jump in there. Um, when, when I'm evaluating all time greats, I'm 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 not I'm not just taking into account um, talent. Uh, it, it, I mean, all of, all of that plays a part, but I, I look at some of the um, some of the intangibles for us, you know, for us mental psyche and stuff like that, and. And LeBron, as much as he's my guy, I, I'm still not blind to the fact that he's gotten rattled in some of the biggest stages, you know, throughout his career. And and I'm not sure that he's quite over that because that's one of the things that scares me so much about a healthy Miami team. I think that those guys in that series mm-hmm. will really, really play – and to the psyche of his mentality, and if he still has those demons that he had before he left Cleveland, which is I'm not sure if they're there or not, you know, because I've seen him regress in that San Antonio game six before Ray Allen hit the shot. Um, so, you know, that right there is a big hurl, hurling block for me to, to, to put him ahead of even guys like Shaq or Will Chamberlain right now. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, okay. Um, so that's just me, man. You know, that's just me. I like him. He's my guy. But I got him right about nine. Okay, Rod. It's all on you, buddy. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and I, and I, I agree. I agree with what Wayson has in that. 
Um, yeah, he's he's around. He's around eight or eight or nine. Um, um, my 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 problem with uh, the the ranking is I, I feel like um, from day one, ESPN wanted to anoint this kid. Um, I don't know, maybe because you know they they followed his college games and they told us then that I mean not college, I mean high school games that. He was going to be great then, and so they just, they just, you know, and they even uttered the words, he's going to be better than Michael Jordan back then. And so, you know, and they try so hard to make sure that he lives up to that height, which for all intents and purposes, he lived up to the height, but not, you know, he's going to be better than Michael Jordan height. Um, and uh, really just, I just feel like they, they really try so hard to force feed us LeBron's greatness, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, I feel like, you know, I, I'm, I'm really going in on the, the media on this one. Um, because I think, it's, I think it's disrespectful to the game to put him that high. To put him that high, um, because basically if you put him that high right now, if he wins another championship, he got to go up. <laughs> right. So, 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 so what you going to say, he's better than Michael Jordan at that point? You know, I mean – he got to move up. You, 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 you put him in a at a at an unfair advantage. Oh, so and then so if he goes and loses, or, or Lord forbid, if he lost the first or second round of playoffs this year with a pretty good team, are we going? Are we going to dock him? Are we? Are we going? Are we going to knock him out out, out out the top ten altogether? I, I don't think that would be fair to him, you know, because he is a great player. So it's just, it, it, I mean, I just think that ESPN really. You know, really bungled this one. They just, they just, they went, they went, they went overboard. They, they really, really overreached, and um, and it was, it was just disres- very disrespectful. Also, in my opinion, you know, just to really break down the list, um, he had no business being over Tim Duncan or Kobe. I mean, like, when, 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 when did he, when did he surpass either of those guys? Because last time I checked. Tim Duncan has beat him twice. Um, Kobe Bryant got five. Last time I checked, five better than, than two. Um, and and you know, like these guys, they played their whole career and they they they've achieved everything. You can really stand back and look at their career and be like, okay, these guys belong in the top ten. ESPN disrespectful behind. They didn't even put Kobe top ten. <laughs> I mean, which is which is that, that's for another show. Like, yeah, and that's for another show. Crazy. But that, yeah, that, yeah, that, that's a, that's a whole other show. But but this guy here, who you know, fair or unfair, however you want to put it, really went to Miami and was in Dallas. That that Dallas series, that right there, supposed to get you docked tremendously on points. Like nobody else in the top ten ever choked to that magnitude. I mean, he choked not a game. He choked the series. Like so, I mean, like. You know, LeBron's great, great talent, but like Wasey was saying, the mental fortitude. You know, you got to judge that too. You know, intangibles got to be judged too. You know, when it comes down to it, you know, who you want to take you home? For me, it ain't LeBron. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, you know, I, I disagree with the with the with the ranking that they have, man, as well, but. Um, you know, one of my reasons is the story is not, you know, the storybook does not close yet. You know what I mean? He still has, you know, a good solid, you know, six seasons, you know, at least six more seasons to go. You know, so we need to see how it all unfolds. I mean, you put somebody in the top three all time in a sport. I mean, I think that you, you know, it's not a rule, but, you know, there's a lot of guys that's already in the top ten, quote, unquote, that, you know, their, their chapters are closed now. They, they've done everything. You have everything you can look back on their entire career. And I just think it was, it's too soon to put him that high. Um, I mean, can you project that he may end, you know, end up in the top five or somewhere in there? You probably can do some projections, but, uh, it's just too soon for me. Um, there's too many yeah, great yeah, names. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's special when one of those great names are uh, still playing and, could very well you see them again in the finals, and they could very well beat you behind again in the finals. Well, that, so, that is possible. That is possible. You know, but, so, so, so I mean, if, if Tim if Tim Duncan beats you three times, I mean, well, it's all, you know. And, 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 but but, <laughs> but, that do to not, but not even Duncan. Look at Akeem Olajuwon, right? I mean, 
isn't it possible yeah. that he should be considered in the top ten all time? I mean, and he has two championships. If I, yeah. Uh, yeah, he has two championships. So two, two, two I mean, and two. Got him, got, got him done both times. Yeah, so First it's time. not. Yeah, so it's not a. Uh, it's not as clear cut as uh, I think ESPN has it, in my opinion. But you know, um, you know, you guys, you know, you, you brought you brought the information in, and uh, I think you guys are more realistic than what ESPN, you know, brought to the table. So I'm going to lean in your direction with this one. So, oh, yeah. hey man, great show. I appreciate you guys coming on. And uh, I definitely will make sure that the uh, producers get this show out there on YouTube. Uh, if anybody has, you know, any questions or comments, you know, please contact uh, contact us at the number four one one Sports World Podcast at gmail dot com. And uh, as I said earlier, we will um, have this show placed on YouTube and 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 on other social media outlets, um, so you can listen to the the great words spoken by Wacy and Rod. Um, and your host four one one. Um, any party shots, fellas? Well, well, for me, man, like I say, man, always, always a pleasure, man, chopping it up with you guys, man, about uh, basketball, man. Uh, you know, two very knowledgeable guys, man, and I just I enjoy chopping it up with y'all, man. And one more thing, too, man. We I know we will, but I just want to make sure, you know, we got to get back. <laughs> And do a playoff edition, man. We got to. We will. Oh yeah. We will. Now that's one thing that you can go ahead and put in the in the all time rankings. We will have <laughs> we will have a playoff show. Oh yeah, we got to. Though. We got to. <laughs> we will um, definitely do that. I, uh I, I would say my, my, my part in shot is this right here, man. Um we we're down to the final 2019 games of uh, seeing the great Kobe Bryant. Um, even though he's a shell of himself and this is nowhere near the Kobe Bryant that um, the killer and, 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 you know, breaking hearts around the league, um, you know, just to see greatness uh, one more time, uh, I definitely advise if you got NBA league pass or anything like that, anytime he on national TV or whatever, man, take the time, stop what you're doing and witness the greatness. Um, cause we don't get them like that too often. Yeah, you're right about that one, brother. And, and check this out. NBA, even if you're not a, um, NBA League Pass, uh, subscriber right now to the entire season, you can also, you know, for six ninety nine, you can, you can order one particular game. So if there's a game out there that you want to watch, cause right, um, you can, you know, you can order that game for six dollars and ninety nine cents. Which is a lot cheaper than, than like some of the fans have been doing and spending thousands of dollars flying airplane and purchasing tickets and, you know, trying to figure out what day he's going to actually play and, uh, actually missing, you know, they, they getting a ticket for the game he's not even playing. So, you know, six, not six dollars and 99 cents, you know, that's a great investment there if you want to take another look at, at, at Kobe Bean Bryant or any other, or any of your favorite teams, uh, or players. Um, you know, my parting shot is um, appreciation, and this is what I've been. This is what you know, debates and in, in, in sports is all about. And I think we all just need to sit back and appreciate um, the sport. I mean, the competitiveness, the unpredictable uh, scenarios, things that's going to come up. You know, upsets. Um, just, just, just appreciate what's going on. Um, I know we had a lot of debates about players of the past and and players of today and teams of the past and teams of today and and all that type of thing. But let's appreciate what's going on out here. I mean, we have a team with six losses. We have a team with ten losses all year. You you, you mentioned earlier the great ones. I mean, you even have Kevin Garnett. You know his leadership in Minnesota. You know you're not really, you know hearing anything about Kevin Garnett anymore, but, you know, he's he he's part of the reason why why, why Towns is rookie, you know, going to be rookie of the year and Wiggins is flourishing and, and things like that. So uh, let's appreciate these guys, man. Uh, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, you know, what's another player? Paul Pierce, you know, he's been a great one. 
and he's still hanging in there. But, you know, these guys are not what they used to be, but they're still um, influencing the league. So let's appreciate that. Let's appreciate the young guys um, as they carry the torch. So, and let's appreciate each other. You know, as you have your sports debates and things like that, you know, it's fun, guys. It's fun, and you can learn a lot from each other. And, you know, just in this just in this past hour, man, I've learned so much, man. Uh, you guys, again, y'all bring it, and, and and you make me see things in a much better light. So I appreciate you guys, and I appreciate everyone who took the time to listen to our show. And uh, we look forward to uh, having many more of these guys. That's right, man. That's good. All right. All right. All right. Well, on behalf right. of... On behalf of Wacy and, and Rod, I'm Mr. 411. We thank you all for listening. You have a good night. All right, good night.